dare Buford Lyons make such a fool of me at the teachers' meeting this afternoon. As we were coming to the end of the fall semester, I had made a formal request to teach Greek three in the spring. The language was one of my first loves and the reason I took my teaching position. But ever since I began teaching at Steele High School, I had been regulated to the introductory classes and languages. First year Latin was a painful course to teach. Most of the students didn't want to be there and had no interest in learning any language, especially not a dead one. I had thought with so many years teaching under my belt that the upcoming retirement of Mr. Wellings, the current Greek three teacher, I would be allowed to take on a more demanding course. We can't have women teaching underclassmen, Buford had said when I made the formal request in front of the faculty assembly. The young men in these courses are far too close to Miss Wright's age. They won't take a young woman seriously, and they need to concentrate on their lessons, as our students of Greek are the most likely to go on to college. Still, high school has a reputation to uphold. I stood up. I studied Greek at Oberlin College and graduated with top honors in the course. I am more than cap- You are still a woman, he said. The word as if it was some sort of slur. I put my hands on my hips. Should I be pointing out the obvious you are an old man? The principal, Mr. Mellon, took his mallet and banged the table in front of him. Miss Wright, please calm yourself. I bawled my hands at my sides. Why was I asked to calm myself? But Buford wasn't. I knew why, because as Buford had pointed out, I was a woman. That was reason enough for them to reprimand me, and that truth set my teeth on edge. I do understand your educational background, Mr. Mellon went on, but the school board has already decided it would be best if the upperclassmen were taught by Mr. Lyons. Buford sat back down in his chair with a smug look on his face. What? He doesn't know half the Greek I do. Mr. Mellon held his gravel, gavel in hand as if he was contemplating rapping on the table again. A veteran teacher is best for the course. You are still early in your career. You mean a veteran male teacher? I corrected. Miss Wright. The matter is settled. Now we must move on to other topics of concern. Yes, Miss Wright, Buford said. You should stick to selling Christmas trees. That's more appropriate for a female teacher. He smiled at me, his gray mustache twitched, as if he was holding in a laugh. Excuse me for caring about the students and wanting them to have access to arts programs while in high school. I'm willing to make the extra efforts for my students rather than sitting on my laurels and accepting positions I'm unqualified for simply because I'm the oldest man in the room. Miss Wright, Mr. Mellon exclaimed in shock. The smile had faded from Buford's face. I had successfully hit my mark. He'd made me look like a fool, but he was the fool. He couldn't even conjugate in pig Latin. At the end of the meeting, I stormed from the room. Typically, after school, I went home, like the dutiful and obedient daughter and sister I was. But on that day, I was just too spitting mad to face the demands of my family. It was a crisp December day, and a walk into town was just what I needed. Fresh snow dusted the lampposts and street signs. It was not yet thick enough to stick to the ground. The shop windows were all done up for Christmas with evergreens, red ribbons, and toy trains. I let out a sigh. I should be concentrating on my holiday shopping instead of what Buford Lyons had said. His comment about the school fundraiser steamed me the most. I'd been working for weeks to make sure the Christmas tree sale and carol singing went off without a hitch, and it was set for the holiday break. All the proceeds would be going to the music department. Even though music wasn't my specialty, I loved listening to it, and I knew it was an important part of public education. I was working with the Parent Teacher Association and Asso Association President Lenora Shaw to organize the fundraiser. The PTA was in its infancy, but I recognized what a vital partner it would be in achieving our fundraising goals, and when I told Principal Mellon of my enthusiasm, he'd appointed me as the teacher liaison. It wasn't until later that I learned he'd chosen me because I was a woman, not because of my support of the group. Buford, Principal Mellon, and all the men in the building were the same. They believed I would be grateful I was allowed to be in the same room with them and completely ignore the fact that I had more common sense in my left pinky than all of them combined. I had to put the incident at school behind me, if only for a little while. Winter recess would be here soon, and I needed the break as much as my students did. This afternoon, I hoped to visit the bookshop and find something new to read, to take my mind off this 
wicked ridiculous school rules I had to abide by as a female teacher. I might find a gift for my father and brothers as well. A gentleman recognized from town, but could, I could not name, tipped his hat to me and said, Good afternoon, Miss Wright. We heard your brothers are at it again. What are they thinking, that they can fly like a bird? It goes against nature. If God wanted us to fly, he would have given us wings. Are you suggesting humans should not swim because we do not have fins? He blinked at me as if my retort was some sort of riddle that could make it, he couldn't make heads or tails of. I beg your pardon? I adjusted my spectacles on my nose. If anyone can achieve flight in our lifetime, it will be my brothers Wilbur and Orville. Two boys from Dayton, he snorted. That is as likely as old St. Nick walking down the street. <laughs> well, I suggest you make up, make up for being on his naughty list because I hear he's out on a stroll checking off names. With that, I marched away. I left him there, headed into the bookshop, and browsed for a long while. There was nothing like books to put my mind at ease. Katie, I didn't see you there, a kind voice said. You were all hunched over that book. What is it? I held up the tome in my hands to show my old school friend Agnes Osborne. A history of Rome. Agnes snorted. I should have known you would be engrossed in something of that sort. My interests have not changed, Ag. You're nothing if consistent. She tugged on a lock of hair that had fallen from his hairpin. Have you heard from your brothers? I would be interested to know how they are getting on in North Carolina. They write, of course, though not as often as I would like. They write more often to father than they do me, but they seem to be getting on fine. They said they were very close to heavier-than-air-powered flight. Haven't they said that before? A time or two, I admitted. Why aren't they happy with the bicycle shop? Why isn't that enough for them? W would they not be happier to settle down and marry? Don't they want children? I shook my head and said nothing. These were questions I had received often in regard to my brothers. I have tired of answering them after so many years. I was grateful when Agnes changed the subject. Will you be at the Shaw's party this Saturday? I plan to go as long as Father doesn't need me. Lenora Shaw is hosting and inviting everyone on the steel PTA. I heard a lot of, a lot of young one, men will be coming to home to see the families for Christmas. They'll be at the party. You should know the Shaw's party is a real start of the holiday season in Dayton. This was the first time I have had an opportunity to go. The presence of young men is of no concern to me. I'm far too busy with teaching, caring for father, and minding my brother's bicycle shop to have such time for things. She clicked her tongue. You need to have a life of your own. You are too wrapped up in others' lives. Haven't you ever cared for a man who wasn't a family member? Have you thought about being in love? My friend gave a little swoon of the very idea, but Agnes Osborne had been dreaming of love since she was in pigtails. I know this because I had heard about it at nauseam for the past twenty years. I pressed my lips together. When I was in college, I had briefly been engaged. My family never knew about it, and I didn't love the man. It just seemed getting engaged was what senior men did, and as a sophomore, I'd gone along with the proposal. Thankfully, both of us had realized our foolishness before it was too late, or before I made the mistake of telling father or my brothers. They would have never forgiven me had I married, hopefully. However, they had been another man whom I'd cared for deeply. Unfortunately, he was now married to someone else. I said none of this to Ag, and was thankful she'd never visited me at Oberlin College when I had attended school, so she never knew nothing of either man. No one in Dayton knew of them. I looked at the small watch pin attached to the lapel of my coat. I should be heading home, fatherly wondering where I have been so long. I hope I didn't upset you, Katie. That wasn't my intention, I know. But I would appreciate it if you would not bring the idea of romance up again. She didn't give me an answer one way or another as we said our goodbyes. Taking the Roman history I had purchased at the shop, I made my way home to number 7 Hawthorne Street. The white house with green shutters came in view. I noted that some of the greenery and red bows had wrapped around the posts on the wide front porch had come loose. I would need to fix these before I entered the house. Ever since my mother had died when I was 15, I had been determined to keep a nice home for my father and brothers. They went for both the inside and the out. Everything had to be just so. I stepped under the wide porch and set my satchel on the white rocker.
but before I could even pick up the first bow, the front door flew open. Miss Wright, you're home, exclaimed Carrie Kaler, our 17-year-old maid. She wore her dark hair in a bun at the back of her head, and her attire consisted of a simple gray dress with a white apron. Her hazel eyes were the size of dinner plates. Carrie, what is wrong? Is father all right? Fear clawed at my chest. Had my father fallen ill? I'm fine, my father said, in his booming bishop's voice. He stood in the foyer, holding a telegram. He kept looking down at it. A f new fear overtook me. Had something happened to my brothers? Are the boys all right? He handed the Western Union a telegram to me. What I took, what I read, took my breath away. Success. Four flights. Thursday morning. All against twenty. One mile wind started from level with engine power alone. Average speed through air thirty one miles. Longest fifty seven seconds. If formed, press home. Christmas. Orville Wright. The paper fell from my hands. It seemed that everything in the world was about to change.